everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all how you can have better management of your document libraries for Dynamics 365. The agenda today will be me explaining how document management works with Dynamics 365. Then I'm going to talk about the issue followed by the logic that you're going to see today in my cloud flow. And then we're going to jump straight into the demo. Document management works like this today in Dynamics 365. So we have a document library, which is a repository for the documents. So these documents are stored in document locations, which are essentially folders in the document library. And so when you use Dynamics with SharePoint, when you set up the configuration, you point it to a default document library. And then when you create a record against a particular row or uh, table, sorry, when you create a record in a table or create a row in a table, um, let's say example, for example, the case, it will create a folder that represents the document location in the default document library. Okay, so essentially this is what it looks like. As I mentioned, we will be using a case today and there would be a document library that was created by default. And then in the document library, you'll have more than one document location. And then in your document locations, you can have multiple files. And this is what it looks like. So when you go to Dynamics 365 and you pull up a case record, you can upload documents. And in terms of SharePoint, you will have your default libraries created whenever you set up your document integration, document SharePoint integration with Dynamics 365. For example, at the bottom of my screenshot, you can see that there is case. And then when you look at the case document library, you'll see all the document locations that live under there. And whenever you look at a document location, so in other words, the folder, you'll see all the files that live against that document location. So the issue is that a library can't have more than 50,000 unique security scopes. So I believe the recommended limit is 5,000. And once you reach, well, once you have more than 50, you're gonna hit into problems. So one recommended way of getting around this is to have your document library split out by certain criteria. Now, the method that I'm gonna be using today is splitting it out by the year. So in other words, we will have document um, libraries that will represent, let's say case, 2021, case 2020, case 2019, and so forth. Now, there are different methods that you can apply. So some customers will do something like based on location or, or region, but for today's WTF episode, I'm gonna do it by period, and that is using the year of a date field in Dynamics 365. Okay, so in terms of the logic, what we're gonna do is first check that the document library for the period exists whenever a document has been uploaded against a case record. And then if it does not exist, what we want to do is create a new document library in SharePoint for that particular period. And then we need to create a document location record in Dynamics 365 that represents that newly created um, document library for that particular period. Now, there are some scenarios where the document library already exists for the period. So in that example, what would happen is that the folder, so in other words, the document uh, location would move away from the default setup which would be just case into the existing document library for that period. So in other words, case 2019. And then we also need to update the document location row in Dynamics 365 to now point to that new, um, sorry, to point to the document library that represents that period. I know this is kind of like what I don't understand right now, but I'm gonna show you how this works end to end. So. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the demo. I'm gonna head over to my Power Automate Maker site and this is what my Cloudflow looks like. If you watched my previous WTF episode, I shared with you all how you can trigger a, crowd, a Cloudflow based on the regarding object type. So in other words, if this regarding object is equal to case, so in other words, incidents, 
then I want this cloud flow to be triggered. If it equals accounts, then I don't want this cloud flow to be triggered because I only want to implement my document library format for the case table. The next thing that we're doing is setting a delay. We are setting a delay because when you go and upload a document against a record in Dynamics 365, it will automatically create the document location straight away and it will do it even though you haven't uploaded your document yet into the document library. Um, I will show you what I mean by this when we head into Dynamics 365. Okay, and so the reason why I'm doing a delay is so that we can wait until that document has actually been uploaded and then we're gonna go and carry out the rest of the flows. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. We're gonna carry out the rest of the actions in this cloud flow. So the next action that I'm performing here is I am grabbing the case record that is associated to the regarding object. And that's because we want to pull out the year that this case was acknowledged or received. And so what that will look like is this, this is my expression. So I'm basically grabbing just the year value from a date field. The next action that we're performing, sorry, I just kept clicking, is to grab all of the document location rows from Dynamics 365, because what we want to check is whether a document location, sorry, a document library exists for that period. And again, we are checking whether that year from the case exists in a document library. And that will live in the relative URL column of the document location record. Okay, so the next action is an initialize variable action. Now, the reason why we're doing this is so that we can tell the flow downstream what it needs to, well, where it needs to move the um, document location to. So in other words, whenever you upload a document against a case, again, it's gonna upload it against the default document library, but we wanna move it to the document library that represents the period that it should live in. And this is why we are using a variable so that we can reference it down here in my flow, which I'll get to soon. Okay, so as I mentioned in my slides, when we had a look at the diagram, what we're doing here is checking, okay, does a document library for this period exist? If it does not exist, then what we wanna do is go and create a new document library in SharePoint where the naming convention uses the year value from my case. So in other words, um, if it's 2019, it's gonna read case 2019. And then what we wanna do next is create a document location record in Dynamics 365 so that any documents in the future can be uploaded to that document library. Okay, so what I'm doing in here again is creating a new document location record in Dynamics 365 using the same naming convention where it's just case and then the year. Um, I'm setting the location type to general and in here I'm referencing it to the SharePoint site. Now in here I've simply entered in the GUID. What you should be doing is using an environment variable, but I'm not gonna cover it that today in this WTF episode. And then in terms of the relative URL, I want to point it to my newly created document library. So this is what it's going to be. It's gonna be case and then again the year based on the acknowledged date or receive date of my case. And then in this action, what we are doing is grabbing that new SharePoint document location ID. And again, we're setting it to the variable up here. Otherwise, if that document library for that period already exists, that's great. Then we're just gonna use that um, document library and we're gonna move my, um, folder, so in other words, the document location from the default site to the document library that represents the period that it should be in. Okay, so in terms of that moving that I was talking about, this is what this action is doing. It's gonna go and grab the folder from the default document library document location, and it's gonna then send it to the document library for the period that it should be in. 
And then my final action is updating the reference of that document location record to point to the document library of the period that the case should be in. Okay, so let me show you how this works end to end. First of all, again, this is what my SharePoint site looks like. Um, let me just refresh this because I would have deleted case 2019. Yeah, I did. Okay. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, I don't have a document library that represents 2019. So now if I go back into my case record, we can see that I've got an acknowledged date and the year in here is 2019. So what I will do next is head over to the related tab, hit documents, and this is where I can upload my document. So right now, what will happen is that a document location will be created against the default site. So I'm just gonna head over to advanced find and just show you. So I'm gonna hit refresh and you can see that it's created against the default site. So in other words, this is gonna be pointing to my default case document library that was created when we set up the SharePoint document management integration with Dynamics 365. And this is why we do a delay because if I didn't have a delay, it would go and run all through those actions in the Cloudflow and we don't want that. We only wanna do it after a file has been uploaded. So now that this file has been uploaded, um, we need to wait two minutes because of my delay. And if we have a look at the run history, we can see that it has been executed. So that kicked off at 5.07 and Let's wait until two minutes is done. So I will be with you shortly. Okay, so my Cloudflow has now successfully executed after two minutes. So let's have a look. So what happened here is that it did find that no document library existed for that current period. So then it would have created my new document library that represents the 2009 period and moved the documents from the, the default document location to the document location that represents 2019. So let's have a look by refreshing my SharePoint site and we'll see that in here we have a new document library with my document folder, sorry, document location that was created originally. And we can see that document in there. If I now go to advanced find, we'll see that previously it was pointing to the default document library, which was case. So now if I refresh in here, we can see that it has been updated to now point to my new document library that represents that period. And then if I go into my case and if I click on open location, this will now go ahead and open up my new document library where my document location has been moved to. So to demonstrate how this will work going forward, what I'll do is have another case here and I will now upload another document because this time what should happen is that now that a document library exists for the period of 2019, it won't create a new document library. It's going to move the document location from the default library of case to my existing document library that represents the period, which is case 2019. So let's go back to my run history. And again, we'll wait um, after two minutes has passed and I will check back with you shortly to show you how the document has been uploaded and moved to my document library that represents the period of 2019. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so my Cloudflow has successfully um, executed. So now if we have a look at condition, we can see that it has picked up that the document library for the period already exists. So it hasn't created a brand new one. And then it's moved the folders, in other words, the document location from the default document library of case 
to the case 2019 document library. So let's head back over to my site contents and we can see that the document library um, now has a new document location called uh, Retrieve Pen Particles, which is the document live, uh, sorry, document location that represent that is associated to the case. And we can see the document in there. And then again, if we hit uh, open location back in Dynamics 365, it'll open it directly within that document location that lives under the document library of case 2019. And then once I go back in here and hit the refresh button, again, we should see that it's now pointing to the existing document library that represents that period. And that's it for today's WTF episode. I hope you learned something new. Now, if you don't want to use Cloudflow's and Power Automate to handle your document library setup, there is another um, alternative out there and it is through a company called Connecting Software. They have a third party solution where you can set this up and enable it across any of your entities or, or tables in Dynamics 365 based on what you've defined. What I showed you today was simply restricting it to a single entity. So where I'm only doing it for cases. If you want to apply it across every single entity, then you would have multiple cloud flows, but their particular software is pretty great because not only does it allow you to do it in um, an application, it's uh, in their own application that you can use. It also provides the way, it also provides you with the ability to replicate um, your Dynamics 365 user permissions to SharePoint permissions. So in other words, if a user is not allowed to view a particular document that's associated to a case or they can't view the document because they don't have access to the case, um, those permissions would also be replicated into SharePoint. So I will provide a link to this company in my blog post, so go and check it out. And yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Turn it up. Let's, let's go! Let's go.